Hey everybody, it's Sarah from Grooming School with a video today on optional chaining in JavaScript. So I think the easiest way to explain this is to just show you. So if we come over here to my code, I have an array called grads. And in this array, I have three objects, each containing some information about a recent Grooming School grad, go R22. Um, and the information in them is slightly different and this is what's going to be causing our need to use optional chain so let's see um, what i'm trying to accomplish with this so what i would like to do with my data is to create a friendly message to each grad um, say i'm making an app and they're logging in and i want the user to see this message when they log in so i'm going to say for that grad of grads so for every grad object inside of my grads array I'm going to say, okay, city is going to be equal to grad.location.city. So I'm trying to drill down and find the location and then the city on each grad. And then if it, that doesn't exist, I want it to just give a generic your city. And then I just want to console log this, hey, grad.min the first house weather in city. And so if we come over here, we can see that it's working. So Grant um, has a location. Uh, for city of New York. So we get a grant house of weather in New York. Alex does not have a city. So we're just getting our generic your city. And Nathan does, he's in San Francisco. So he's getting house of weather in San Francisco. Let's take a look at probably the thing that you noticed that maybe if you're not used to this syntax was a little bit weird and I sort of glossed over it earlier, but just this question mark, what is this question mark doing here? And that's actually what is defining our optional chaining here. So if I get rid of this question mark, check out what's going to happen. Boop. Everything breaks. <laughs> well, not everything. So Grant gets his message because there's nothing, um, JavaScript doesn't encounter anything unexpected when it tries to do the first index in the array. But when we get to Alex, suddenly it's going to try to find grad.location.city and there is no grad.location.city. So it's saying cannot read properties of null reading city. So let's break this down a little bit. What is exactly happening here? The way that JavaScript tries to look up values is it always looks to the left of the dot. So you can imagine here the way that uh, JavaScript is evaluating this grad.location.city is that it goes, okay, grad exists, cool. So uh, location, we're gonna look, just double check. Okay, grad does exist. So now grad.location, what does that evaluate to? And it takes whatever it evaluates to and says, okay, city, is there a city on whatever this evaluated to? So in the examples that don't break, so for example, uh, Nathan here, we would say, okay, so we're trying to find this location. So the location is going to look at grad. Great, we have a grad. So grad.location, uh, that's going to be, oh, this object, which has a state and a city in it. Great. And so now when we look at city, we have grad.location. It's this object. And yes, there is a key of city. So it's great. And we just get San Francisco. So we don't ever get to the second half of this or operator. So that city is assigned to San Francisco and it comes out in the statement. If we try to do Alex, where his location is set to null. Okay, so location is going to look at grad and oh, okay, everything's uh, good so far. But then when we get to city, grad.location has a value of null. So city is trying to look up its value on null, and that's where it gets this type error, cannot read properties of null when it tries to read city. So if grad.location evaluates to null, JavaScript's going to throw an error, or if it uh, evaluates to undefined, it's also going to throw an error. So this is where the optional chaining comes into play. If I add a question mark back in here, now what it's telling JavaScript is if grad.location evaluates to undefined or null, just return undefined. Like, don't bother looking for city because it's, it's going to be pointless. So just like call it undefined and move on don't throw an error so in that case this whole left hand side now instead of throwing an error it just goes to being undefined which is a falsy value so then it's going to go on and look over here and go oh your city and so 
now if you notice our code is not breaking anymore because we've told javascript that if grad.location evaluates to null or undefined don't bother trying to find city so it won't ever throw that error so this is the beauty of optional chaining you could do this by writing some like if statements like or checking to see like if grad.location is not null and is not undefined then go ahead and do x right but this is just a much uh, more streamlined approach to to writing that logic so just to kind of uh prove this point further i can go into uh alex's object and i can change location to undefined and you'll notice that it's still working just fine. If I take out the optional chaining, now it breaks. So cannot read properties of undefined. OK, so I'm going to put my optional chaining back in. <laughs> and now I'm actually just going to like get rid of the location key completely. Like it just isn't going to exist. And you'll notice it actually doesn't break over here because it's just going to evaluate to undefined and JavaScript moves on. If I take out my optional chaining, now we've got cannot read properties of undefined. It's trying to read city. So it's the same type error that we got before. So optional chaining is super duper useful. Let me know what questions you have about this. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I hope you all have a great day. See you next time.